Alright, so uh, let's get started. Um, two students combined presenting and, uh, and, and showing some demos for uh, next generation collaborative web, web applications. And they promise this is going to be a very good presentation. Let's see. <laughs> Okay, so uh, hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the file tree. Uh, it's a project we demoed uh, Gene uh, last week and he really wanted us to talk about it and to demo it, so uh, here we are. Uh, we'd like to keep this uh, as, inter as interactive as possible, so if, whenever, if ever you have a question or something bothers you, uh, ju just don't hesitate, you can inter uh, interrupt and ask questions. Um, and before going to the demos, we're going to be talking about the, the vision of the file tree. Uh, it's a project that has uh, two years now, uh, uh, finishing its third year already. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it comes from somewhere. Um, uh, and uh, so we'd like to show what, uh, what the I ideal vision is for the project. Uh, so first, uh, as any uh, computer science project, uh, we're all about data. Uh, so those uh, zeros and ones uh, which can get together and uh, form uh, characters and words and uh, sentences and uh, more and more complex data structures uh, and so on. Um, and those uh, data get uh, into files. Uh, the file is a very important concept of our project, as you can guess, uh, the file tree. Um, Files uh, are everything. Uh, this is a philosophy that comes from uh, Unix. Uh, when the guys at uh, Bell Labs they decided to uh, make an open, uh, operating system, and they found that uh, representing everything as a file is uh, is pretty convenient because you have uh, uh, a very uh, standard interface to interact with files. You can uh, write to files, you can read files, you can uh, uh, move files around, delete them. And uh, you can represent anything like documents and pictures and movies and even programs uh, as files. Uh, and this vision actually continued after Unix uh, when they uh, Unix was kind of a prototype, I'd like to say, because uh, they had lots of files, but like uh, for networking, they didn't really have files. Uh, and so they tried to continue the picture by building Plan 9, uh, which was kind of the next version. But uh, nobody cared, sadly, because uh, uh, everybody had, was using uh, Unix-like uh, Linux, and uh, it was good enough, so uh, Plan 9 didn't have any success, uh, nor any further development. But the, the point was really to uh, use everything as a file. Uh, in Plan 9, they could, uh, uh, actually like in the graphical user interface, uh, Windows, for example, were files. You could uh, uh, write uh, a word uh, in, into this file, and you would see the words appear in the window. And for example, you also have slash net slash TCP. You can write two sockets uh, as files. And so there are no more system calls, uh, only files. Uh, so what is a file? Uh, a file has uh, metadata, uh, typically. So a name, uh, a type for a file. Uh, we chose to represent types as uh, uh, MIME types. So for example, different uh, uh, kind of uh, files, like images or text files, or etc. Uh, and uh, some, uh, w when it was last modified by somebody, this can also be important for caching. Uh, the file obviously has content, uh, so text or bytes, and uh, some uh, special files which are called folders uh, also have uh, subfiles. So <coughs> this builds a tree, uh, and uh, in this vision, like uh, folders, really are files. So folders can have content actually, which. Uh, uh, we don't really see, uh, uh, usually in uh, uh, folders, you, you, you don't expect to have uh, text content, for example. But uh, this could actually have a meaning. Uh, in a lot of folders we found, find uh, readmes, which are files which describe the content of the folder. So this could be the content of the folder. Uh, and we also have uh, maybe install instructions or whatever. Uh, information is useful in a folder. Uh, and this forms uh, a file system. So. Uh, with the, the slash, uh, so this you uh, all know, but uh, this is, uh, uh, our system is a user space file system. So uh, uh, it's a software that you need to run on your computer and it kind of creates a file system. Uh, so obviously there's more, because uh, this has already been done. Uh, next, uh, let's talk about operational transformation. Uh, this is uh, 
some uh, co concept that uh, is useful for collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's uh, uh, used for uh, real-time concurrent editing. Uh, for example, I don't know if you know Google Docs. Uh, um, multiple people working on the same file uh, and editing, and the changes uh, ha all happen uh, synchronously uh, between people. Uh, so you define operations uh, as being uh, uh, tiny changes to the document, uh, and you send them over the network. Uh, and if two people uh, make two modifications at the same time, you might have to think about uh, what happens. Is it a conflict uh, if they're editing the same word, or uh, how do you solve it? Uh, we actually have one good example of this uh, visualization. So yeah, uh, imagine we have two uh, documents uh, which are the same, and people make uh, modifications to them. Let's say Alice uh, uh, adds a word here. So okay, we saw something happened. Uh, there is one operation that was sent to the server, uh, revision zero, uh, insert a space. That, uh, so here we see the space that I added, and this is sent over the network. Uh, imagine that, uh, so the, the space is added at position 11. This is important. Uh, imagine that at the same time, Bob is uh, uh, del deleting one word in the file. Uh, so this was, will obviously cause some trouble, because here uh, position 11 will no more be position 11. Uh, and uh, here, uh, delete 5 uh, will cause trouble to the other operation. So we can see what happens, for example, if this operation comes through, uh, but this one is stuck somewhere in the network. Uh, Bob will receive this operation, and it will get merged uh, using uh, some algorithm. Uh, there are lots of algorithms in uh, uh, operational transformation, and th their main goal is to uh, preserve the same states uh, for all the clients. Uh, this is the main goal. Uh, you could obviously imagine an, an algorithm that, whenever there's a conflict, uh, deletes everything. This would be consistent uh, across clients, but this would not be very interesting for everybody. Uh, so you can imagine more intelligent uh, algorithm that try to conserve, uh, preserve intentions. Uh, and on the other side, uh, here, there are two modifications that arrive to the client, and whenever, let's imagine, everything gets merged, here, uh, then both documents are the same. Uh, but you see, the not the same operations were uh, happened on, uh, on each of the clients. So this is operational transformation. Um, to really understand the power of operational transformation, we can think about uh, granularity in collaboration. Um, for example, uh, uh, collaboration can happen, on, can happen on a file level. Uh, one good example is Dropbox. I don't know if you know Dropbox or Google Drive, it's uh, almost the same, but let's talk about Dropbox. Uh, they share uh, folders, uh, and whenever people modify files and folders, like, like a friend uh, of yours modifies files in your folder, uh, the changes are ex uh, exchanged between clients and everything is uh, synchronized. But if uh, two people modify the same file at the same time, then a conflict happens. Uh, and Dropbox chose to solve this by saying, uh, oh, there are two conflicted versions, uh, I'm not going to bother doing anything, I'm just going to rename one of them uh, dot .conflicted version uh, of whomever. And uh, this is really annoying. Uh, but you can imagine if you have a folder and uh, with people working on a lot on those files and you have lots of dot conflicted versions to handle, uh, doing the, the merges uh, is very painful. Uh, a little better is uh, line-based collaboration. Uh, this is, for example, patches, uh, diffs. Uh, I don't know if you know about uh, SVN and Git uh, to uh, work in collaboration. Uh, this is very cool because you can modify the same file uh, collaboratively, but uh, if two people modify the same line, uh, it creates a conflict. Uh, sometimes conflicts are not a good thing on the line level. Uh, for example, let's imagine uh, there is uh, some code file which has a for loop. Uh, and I decide to modify the condition of the for loop. Uh, and some other guy uh, decides to put the whole code block into an if statement, so he re-indents the whole code block. Uh, this will create trouble because uh, uh, he will add two spaces in, in front of my line, and I will have changed the condition. So Git will say, hey, there's an error, please fix this. Uh, uh, 
This could have been fixed at a character level, which is the last step. Uh, this is the most precise collaboration uh, because uh, uh, it, will be, it will be able to merge uh, the work of people uh, even if they work on the same line and like change words in the beginning of the sentence or in the end or even if they write at the same moment uh, and they're going to see that they are writing on top of each other so, that, so they're going to stop. Uh, uh, character level is really essential for uh, real-time collaboration uh, because when conflicts happen uh, they can be auto-merged, uh, uh, auto-solved. Uh, you cannot imagine a system where people are writing all together uh, on the same file and conflicts have to be solved manually. Yeah, you cannot not have a pop-up that comes up every time and says, hey, uh, there's a conflict, please solve this. Uh, users don't want this. So we, we have to use operational transformation to make a choice about how to solve the conflict. Uh, and so, uh, if everything goes well, the document uh, is synchronized between a lot of people and stays the same. Uh, now our file system uh, that has files and that is synchronized with operational transformation uh, real-time over network. It also has an API. Uh, we want to make it very compatible with a lot of different systems. Uh, so we have an HTTPS API uh, which, uh, which you can call with JavaScript and uh, which we call in JavaScript in our system. And this can also be called by uh, third-party applications. Uh, one example, this is actually uh, Real code, uh, we use this for the search function. Uh, the search function, whenever you trigger it, it's going to uh, ask for uh, a listing uh, of the of roots or whatever uh, folder you're in uh, and at two subfolders. So it can do the matching but still be efficient. Uh, you don't want to have all the files. So it's going to send a read as an operation. Uh, slash, this is the, the path it's, it's going to read and depth to. Uh, this is one example how you can call uh, the API. Uh, another example is directly through HTTPS. Uh, for example, if you want to, if you have a server running at localhost, uh, you're gonna ask our API, which is FS, uh, to uh, read. This is the operation and uh, this path uh, and with uh, this depth. Uh, so this can be really useful for uh, if you're writing uh, Android applications, for example. Uh, you can uh, actually make HTTP requests to our file system and get the result back in JSON. Um, so third-party applications, this can be considered as a REST API. Uh, you can also access it with curl or wget, uh, for, uh, some friends have done this. Uh, and we actually have uh, a friend of ours who is writing an Android application for the file tree, so this is pretty neat. You can see all the files, you can modify them, do applications directly on your tablet or phone. Um, and also on the other side, we'd like to interface our system with uh, a lot of other uh, services, file-oriented services. Uh, we, it works pretty well because we have a nice file model, so we could be talking to Dropbox or Google Drive, etc. Um, using a specific uh, file system call, we'd like to call mount. Uh, if you mount, for example, a Dropbox, you can specify your account and uh, it will just uh, create a new folder uh, with your files and synchronize everything while giving you access to this in the file tree. So you could basically share files uh, across a lot of different services uh, all in one. Um, okay. We uh, also give a lot of importance to security. Uh, we do all the communications over HTTPS uh, with a uh, uh, big certificates uh, and, uh, and industry standard SSL encryption. Uh, for communications, we also use uh, secure web sockets, uh, which uh, talk over HTTPS. Uh, so that's for the communication part. And then on our server, uh, this is not currently implemented yet, but uh, we have designs for this. And uh, you could specify uh, passwords on some files or folders to uh, secure them. And passwords would cause the files to be encrypted uh, using OCB3 AES, and that means that we don't own the passwords, so we are not able to read uh, files that are on our server. Uh, for example, if, uh, if the FBI was to seize our servers, uh, they would not have the passwords, and so encrypted files, they would not be able to decrypt them. Um, this is why, why we like to say we're more secure than NSA, because uh, the National Security Agency standards uh, 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 they um, 
uh, own the standard SHA-1 SHA and SHA-2, and uh, they're uh, currently, uh, I think, uh, doing the last runs for SHA-3 algorithm. Um, uh, but we use bcrypt. Uh, bcrypt is a slow hashing algorithm versus SHA, which is a fast hashing algorithm. Uh, and I don't know if you're familiar with this, uh, but the, the good thing about uh, bcrypt is that it's really, uh, really tough to crack. Um, SHA uh, is designed to be really fast. Uh, so if you're generating a, a hash on your computer, it's pretty fast, but it's also very fast for specialized hardware to generate lots and lots of hashes uh, to then uh, try to match uh, one hashed password uh, to, fa to, de to dehash it, basically, to uh, obtain your password. And so, to make it more secure, uh, the standard nowadays is to uh, perform 10,000 hashes, so hash uh, things 10,000 times uh, so that they're secure. This makes it slower. So we have a hashing algorithm that is slow for users and very fast to break for uh, specialized hardware because it works very well for a GPU. Uh, Bcrypt on the other side uh, only uh, uses 10 hashes and this is the most secure. Uh, uh, and uh, it's not para you cannot run it concurrently so you cannot use GPU to break it. So it doesn't work on uh, specialized hardware. Uh, uh, as an anecdote, I could say that uh, uh, the iPhone was using SHA-1 and they only did uh, 5,000 uh, uh, hash iterations and uh, they got broken, uh, so then they decided to go for 10,000 iterations. They tried to go faster, but uh, uh, faster doesn't pay uh, in security. Um, okay. Um, and our project is uh, open source. Oh, uh, one last thing, I forgot uh, another anecdote about the bcrypt. Uh, I read a blog post uh, recently about a new, uh, brand new uh, password cracking machine that came out and I did some calculations and it's actually um, uh, 800,000 times uh, slower to crack a bcrypt than to crack a SHA. A SHA. So I think we should use bcrypt. Uh, we're open source. Uh, our, you can find our code here. Uh, on GitHub, uh, we are licensed with the, oh, it's moving. we are licensed with uh, GPL version two, uh, uh, open source license that uh, encourages uh, der derivative work to be republished on this, the same license. Uh, and we really have an awesome community. We have lots of fun, and the project is free. Um, so where are we now? Uh, uh, and uh, it started two years ago in 2010. It was a class project at our school, uh, and our project was to build uh, just uh, the collaborative editor part. Uh, for this, we used uh, CodeMirror, uh, which is a very nice library, uh, which creates an uh, in-browser uh, code editor, uh, and has uh, syntax highlighting for lots of uh, languages, and has lots of features. Uh, and then, the year after, we implemented the file system, uh, to have multiple files and uh, move them around. We also opened uh, the filetree.com, which is our website on which we, we run our software. Uh, and then this year, uh, we changed the operational transformation system. Our previous system had uh, a few tiny edge cases, uh, which we got rid of by uh, using a better library written by uh, a German student, uh, a friend of ours now. Uh, he, um, he just started university. Uh, and I think his library is pretty impressive. The visualization you saw here, it's uh, 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 him alone who made it. Uh, and all, the, all of the library. Uh, we also implemented code execution uh, by submitting to remote servers uh, and uh, have live previews. So this we're going to uh, show you later in the demo. <coughs> uh, now, I'm going to... I will take uh, So. Uh, yeah, you can go to the filetree.com and uh, have a look. It's, uh, it's a good experience. And you can listen to me also. Um, so, um, what about multimedia? Uh, we, we came here, uh, both of us, uh, as an um, international student in the, in the master proposed by Tsinghua. And, um, and the project I'm going to talk about now is uh, uh, supervised by uh, Jin. Uh, so, um, after having spoken about this file system and uh, all of those file stuff um, that are, yeah, that are stakes based, this is the important part, uh, it's 
all text, uh, all plain text, and uh, we wonder. Uh, in this lecture, we we heard about uh, compression you know, of image of videos or other media, and uh, and uh, can uh, can we apply uh, operational transformation uh, principle and uh, technology uh, to other media than just plain text? Um, so uh, I will uh, show you uh, two examples of um, of uh, why uh, this question uh, came to us uh, as an obvious question. Uh, it's uh, on the file tree. We have active users and uh, developers too, and um, it appeared that uh, the need for uh, uh, code uh, sharing edition. Was uh, was a need, but uh, it wasn't the only need. And uh, we have user uh, starting to use uh, text sharing edition to uh, probably you all have uh, seen uh, uh, web pages where you can edit HTML and have live preview. And uh, those two uh, plugs, uh, as we call it, um, are uh, similar to it. Uh, so, yeah, the best way is to show it. Um, I don't know if you know LADEX. Uh, LADEX, it's uh, a cool tool to, um, to uh, have uh, principally uh, mathematic uh, mathematical uh, formula to render well um, so uh, at the beginning it's just like this and uh, yeah, the time to, for the library to load um, so uh, here is the text that uh, several people can edit and having a uh, live preview here so uh, in this example it's obvious that uh, people want to share this document they are working on this one but uh, their interest in, is in this document. Um, the, other, the other one is uh, more obvious because it's not a lot of text in the render part. So um, this is a uh, second diagram. So uh, I, I use it a lot during my studies. I don't know if we are all yeah, familiar, so I'm going to explain uh, quickly. Uh, it's part of the HT. Uh, UML2 uh, uh, and even uh, UML1 uh, uh, standard. Uh, it's a really uh, cool uh, graphical. Um, uh, how do you say this? Uh, standard uh, definition uh, to uh, represent uh, interaction between uh, actors like Bob and Alice are two actors, and they will uh, exchange information. And um, so, uh, example of usage of. Uh, uh, UML uh, sequence diagram or uh, for networking. Uh, it's really helpful when you describe networking exchange. Uh, it's also helpful uh, to uh, describe, uh, like, uh, if you're in a company and you want to uh, analyze some process, uh, having uh, several actors. Yeah. Uh, so here, uh, people will edit this file, and uh, their interest is in the the render part. The sequence diagram they want to build. Um, so in those two examples, uh, you don't want to uh, share text, you want to share uh, something else, another media to communicate. So um, can we do better? Um, can we do better than just have plain text that will then render and uh, we can then build uh, uh, all the kind of media uh, together. The answer is yes, of course, and uh, it's we, what we try to do uh, in our project. Uh, but then uh, you have to think of the problem as we used to have operational transformation for plain text. Uh, when you have other usage, uh, when your user is not just writing plain text, you have to build other operational transformation that will express what the user is doing and what the user wants to do. 
So for drawings, which is uh, the application we build, uh, for drawing, the user operations will be draw, move something that has been drawn, maybe erase it. Uh, you will have a demo uh, yeah, a little bit later. Um, so uh, as we, when we present uh, operational transformation, we spoke about conflicts and the fact that it's really important to be able to uh, handle conflicts. Uh, so the, yeah, here an example is needed. Um, a line is drawn and um, I want to move it. Uh, so oh, this is the, the stuff we are building. Uh, I want to move it this direction, but another user is also selecting the line and want to move it in another direction. What is supposed to happen? That's the problem. Here we have a conflict between uh, two people wanting to do something that is uh, uh, not completely in contradiction, but that is not obviously uh, merging. Uh, well, for just moving it, yeah, you you can. Uh, what what we do is just we apply both movement, and we can have a, a, a synthesis of the both vector of the of the guy. But uh, you you can think on uh, other uh, uh, situation, like what will happen if I'm drawing something, and someone want to delete it. Uh, will I? I have my uh, line that I'm drawing that just disappear and I, I'm like with my pencil uh, in the middle of nowhere uh, and okay so here you may want to uh, prevent people to delete something that is not even finished like uh, he didn't let me finish my my line um, so you have to take decisions uh, operational transformations when you uh, handle conflicts it's all about uh, trying to identify what is the best behavior for uh, the user to have a, a, a good uh, experience. So um, for the three operation, you can maybe uh, have a, a classification, like a, a priority given to uh, some actions. Uh, here's uh, mostly what uh, the priorities are in the current project. Uh, it's not something that is really obvious. It's something you need to try, and uh, then uh, having some experiments, you can uh, build what is uh, the best for for your usage. You can um, yeah, I give examples, uh, but uh, uh, like the drawing and the delete. Maybe you let me finish my drawing before deleting it, please. Or uh, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, delete and move, uh, it's not maybe obvious, but uh, like uh, something is drawn uh, on the part of, the, of my canvas uh, and um, I want to draw something else here. So maybe someone is uh, just uh, moving it, he may want to use it somewhere else. Um, uh, deleting is uh, easy to do and uh, if the guy wants to move it, it's kind of complicated to move drawings, so um, maybe just deleting it will uh, force him to just redraw the stuff and uh, ah, it's, it take, uh, you have to experience it to, uh, to take decisions like this. I mean the same logic follows, right? Maybe, you know, before you delete it, maybe you should see or an intent to move it, right? Or, or you can consider deleting as a special case of moving, right? Because like moving it out of the yeah out of the out of the canvas mm, yes so, like it's so uh, you could make the argument and move it yeah all the action. all the choices are uh, partial choices uh, we did uh, but uh, they can be discussed and they may be changed in the future uh, can you make it configurable <laughs> <laughs> well, this is tricky it, it's completely <laughs> configurable you just have to change yeah. the code <laughs> yeah well exactly um, uh, then uh, those conflicts I spoke about are the the first uh, conflicts you can face when building the system. But then you can think on other conflicts. 
uh, you can think of those conflicts uh, looking at our uh, application as um, haven't stopped drawing I'm still there and I continue my path and here you see that um, here the red is on top but here the green is on top because I was slow here it just went in front of me and uh, clearly those two objects share a relation that is uh, uh, not easy to handle um, so uh, you have to merge it so uh, as like looking at my demo uh, me alone and uh, cutting the green part green uh, line in two it's obvious maybe you have to build an algorithm that will do this cut the green line in two and uh, uh, that's basically yeah. Uh, we it's not built yet, but uh, uh, if you like, we are using a library. I will talk about it later. But uh, we have the tool to uh, kind of build a group of objects uh, that will allow us to uh, handle non-trivial complex. Um, uh, yeah, a funny one you can think of is also uh, object interaction. As uh, the two objects, uh, my green line and my red one line, share the same uh, revision, uh, yeah, time uh, uh, interval, uh, maybe they are able to interact, and uh, you may want uh, it's it's almost um, a, a physics uh, engine that we need, but uh, if you move the red line through. Uh, to the north, and uh, you may want the green line to come with it, because uh, as they are clearly uh, crossing each other, you may want to have the the red one to 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 bring the green one with it. But uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's just uh, all about uh, theoretical stuff. Yeah. Is there a clever way to handle uh, the situation where one of them loses uh, or loses the, the internet connection? Uh. All of this is uh, over the network, and uh, yes, nothing is, is happening uh, client side. A lot of stuff are happening both uh, on the client side and uh, uh, yeah, not too much on the server side. But uh, it's uh, it's a complete uh, yeah. I, it's, it's coming. Um, yeah. So uh, the the question was uh, how to handle. Uh, uh, loss of connection uh, whenever there's operational transformation oh, yeah. and uh, the the fact is that uh, the uh, client uh, is always sending uh, at one time an operation and then waiting for the server to uh, acknowledge and uh, it's uh, buffering other changes uh, in the meantime so if we have lost connection uh, this outgoing operations we, we don't know where, it, where it's gone and we continue to buffer maybe like for two minutes or something uh, and then whenever the connection comes back uh, uh, the operation will be acknowledged uh, and you're going to send all the other operations uh, and they will get merged just as if you were doing them uh, on the spot so this is very resilient for a network uh, 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 losses uh, and you might run into some trouble if you're like cutting connection for two weeks and working some complicated stuff uh, you might run into trouble but for uh, like short short period uh, connection losses it, it, it handles pretty well yeah. exactly. Yeah, actually, uh, the first versions uh, uh, weren't able to uh, handle uh, network uh, latency. But uh, at, as we look through it, uh, no, you can even work uh, uh, offline. But you are alone, so uh, it loses all its interests. Uh, but uh, yeah, you, uh, I will speak later about the data structure and then it will be uh, more clear. So a little bit of uh, technology to change with all the theoretical part. Um, this page is uh, just a uh, one uh, HTML5 canvas that is taking all the, all the page. Um, all the code is uh, JavaScript and we have uh, heavy use of the a library paper.js uh, for um, the objects, the, um, the graphical objects. Um, then WebSockets, we already talked about it, uh, are the 
communication support. We we still have some uh, uh, HTTP posts for uh, sharing images, but uh, it could be uh, put into the web socket. And uh, on the server side, it's uh, not JS. Uh, so I don't know if you have heard about it. It's uh, on GitHub is I think the most uh, uh, vibrant uh, project today. Uh, it's uh, to run a JavaScript on the server side. Uh, so uh, then uh, let's talk about data structure. Uh, just to give you an idea of what's uh, behind it. Um, so I will draw it. And use uh, our tool, maybe. Maybe not in green. <laughs> yeah, maybe not in green. Maybe not that big. Okay, so our our first uh, place to store information is a, a buffer that will handle all the operations the client is uh, creating um, on his uh, on his uh, brother and um, he also have to um, keep um, a data structure where he will store all the operation he has done so it's basically his own personal history uh, where our star all the operation he had done this is essential for doing an undo redo and uh, we want to support it so those posts that are structure our star on the client side and on the server side we have something else we have a huge shared It's a representation of the file, but it's a... Uh, actually, I drew it as an array, but it's not an array. <laughs> it was at the beginning, but uh, it appeared that a uh, hash map was more uh, pertinent. Um, so every operation that are put into the buffer and in uh, the object shared by everybody. Uh, with uh, numbers uh, that indicate the revisions. Uh, so that was, that's why at the first time it was an array, because with numbers indicating revision, it should be, uh, it seemed it's obvious, but uh, it's not so simple. So, uh, so that's, uh, that's all, well, almost, but uh, that's the essential part. Uh, you need uh, to store your operation. If you're online, you can work only on this. Uh, but the, 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 the challenge in building our system is to be able to do whatever the operations the uh, client wants to do, either on the local stuff that may have not been sent yet to the server, and on stuff that are already shared with uh, all the other people. So. Uh, what we have learned so far uh, building this um, something I haven't really spoke about yet is uh, the data you lose um, you at several at a lot of step of uh, the lifetime of the of the file or of the drawing um, you lose data uh, you lose data because uh, you may have deleted some stuff. Uh, you lose data because uh, maybe it wasn't. Yeah, I guess you have seen it. But uh, like here, if I put something that is not really straight, it gets smooth. Um, so something happened. We 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 add it because it was really important to us to have some uh, post processing. Uh, because we wanted to have uh, uh, the multimedia concern uh, and uh, drawing may be simple but uh, if you want to work on video or uh, more complex stuff 
uh, post processing is a huge part of it because uh, the data is uh, compressed. Because uh, so um, so yeah. For this, I may uh, yeah. let Jan talk because yes, in the project since. Uh, we'd like to extend a few thanks uh, first to Jean uh, for this event, for organizing this. Uh, our uh, big friend uh, Tadé Thiel, uh, also known as Espadron, he's a core contributor to the file tree. Uh, he's done a lot of stuff, uh, including the file system, and he couldn't be here today because he's uh, studying in Switzerland. Uh, behind Hafebecker, he uh, is the guy who wrote Code Mirror, uh, which I can show you. It's the editor we use uh, here. Uh, it's a very nice project and it's also open source uh, and it supports uh, a lot of languages like you can see here. So uh, thanks to this editor, th those are languages we support on the file tree. It also has uh, a lot of uh, very, cool, very cool features. What does it do exactly? What sorry? does this do exactly? Uh, the editor, oh sorry. Uh, it's, uh, it's basically syntax highlighting for uh, code. And this is the editor. Uh, and for example, this is a, a C sharp code, so you could type, and uh, it gets uh, syntax highlighted. And uh, there is a lot of uh, lot of different languages, uh, basically any language you want to write. Uh, and this is uh, a demo uh, I wrote uh, with uh, this. Uh, this is a, uh, the first live demo we wrote for the file tree. Uh, actually, when you're uh, this is not very cool. Uh, w when you're writing. Uh, it, uh, it is uh, instantly uploading on the right, uh, if I type the syntax correctly. Uh, and, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, this was our first uh, project, the collaborative editor, uh, uh, which had a live preview in HTML. Uh, also, uh, Tim Baumann, he wrote the operational transformation library, uh, which we used, and also this uh, very cool vi visual visualization. Uh, uh, I think he does a, a, an amazing job and now he's joined the project, we're very happy. Uh, Brendan Ike, who invented JavaScript, so it's a very nice feat. Uh, and also he did the, those uh, slides, we uh, based uh, most of our slides on, on, on this, uh, this is a pretty cool slide engine. Uh, and our school, finally, who uh, hosted us uh, as a class project. Uh, in Salion, uh, and many others who contributed, like our, our, our friends. Uh, he wrote uh, the sequence diagram live preview, uh, which was very impressive. We were uh, quite amazed when he did it. Uh, uh, Benjamin Bouvier did a, a to-do application uh, where you can have a, a, your own to-do list based on a JSON file, which is uh, pretty good. Benjamin Augustin has, is writing the Android application. and. Uh, uh, Gaetan is uh, currently in Sweden and he's working on uh, uh, server side. Uh, so he's working with Linux containers and uh, his goal is to make uh, server side uh, virtual machines which would be used for uh, server side code execution. Uh, basically, so you would have a pool of virtual machines and any code you write you could execute it. And the final vision is uh, when you have a bash script uh, on the file tree which uh, creates uh, maybe 100 other files, uh, if you run it, it would create the files. Uh, uh, you would see them appear on the website. Uh, and now maybe place to the de to the demo. So you saw already a couple of. Uh, uh, first, before the demo, I don't know if you have uh, if you have any questions or if we can jump into the demo. Yes. Do you keep keep a copy of every revision of a file? Or uh, so uh, they are stored as operations. Actually, uh, we don't keep uh, revisions of files. If you have a very big file, for example. Uh, it's going to be stored at first uh, uh, the file, but if you modify it, you're going to only store the modifications. So you're going to see like uh, uh, revision one, uh, this guy added one word, revision two, uh, the other guy deleted one character, and etc. Okay. So you only store the operations. Uh, so this uh, delta encoding principle, which is also very useful in multimedia, it keeps things uh, very, uh, very tight, uh, and you don't use a lot of memory. So if I want to get uh, a file at a certain revision, mm -hmm. I only need to get some operation transformations from a server and we rebuild the file on the client, right? Uh, yes, you server. could either rebuild the file on the client or on the server, but the point is you have to uh, start with the first image and then apply um, all the operations, yes. <coughs> you could uh, maybe optimize this if... Uh, uh, 
if necessary, but, uh, but yeah. Um, okay, so uh, the demo. Um, so you saw uh, this uh, demo folder, which uh, contains a lot of file examples we support, uh, and most of them are actually executable. Uh, if you were to, for example, <coughs> I, don't know, <coughs> I don't know if you have a bash script. Oops. Yeah, here. <coughs> you could uh, run it, and uh, uh, when you decide to run it, it uh, pastes to another website uh, which does uh, code execution. Uh, this other website t takes a, uh, a while to load and it has uh, ads, it's, it's not a nice website. This is why we're working on uh, making the code execution on our server. Uh, this would be uh, way nicer. And uh, this is too long for me, I don't want to wait. Um, there are also, uh, also some live previews. You saw the sequence diagram live preview, but we have some for uh, Markdown, which is a nice syntax. You can uh, write documentation with it and see the, see the result in real time. So the point of uh, live previews is that you can uh, uh, write and see the results uh, on the other side in real time. Uh, hello, um, et cetera. Uh, the, whoops, the one you saw uh, for HTML uh, is still there. Uh, this is a canvas we saw, and if we hit the live preview, we can see the results in real time. It's, uh, it's actually faster than on the mirror website because we do uh, updates in real time. Uh, we also implemented some syntax uh, validation. You could paste to another website for uh, va validating the syntax, if it's a uh, correct HTML5 or not. Um, and the other one you saw was for uh, LaTeX. Basically. <coughs> this, mm -hmm. um this session of the file tree is running locally, but you can go on the real website and, uh, and play around. The file tree .com. Yeah, the point is that every file here is uh, collaboratively editable uh, and uh, accessible by anybody. And so we, we, use, we tend to use this a lot for uh, collaborative projects. Uh, actually, at our school, uh, we noticed that whenever we needed to be a lot of people working on a file very fast, we would be using uh, Google Docs, and uh, Google Docs is not, not very good for code because it has like rich text, and uh, you can do bold and underlined. But this is not really interesting for code. And for code, you really need syntax highlighting like this, uh, different colors, and maybe some tools for syntax validation or uh, uh, code execution. Uh, okay, this is it. And uh, I don't know if you want to demo the. Uh, two, uh, two version of the. Oh. To see the this chair. Like here, I'm I'm alone on the drawing, so it's not really interesting. But if I have uh, someone joining me, um, then we are two, and uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's better to see uh, for real. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is maybe. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, a good uh, reason to talk about a, a really special object, which is uh, if you remember the data structure, uh, you have a buffer uh, that is local and uh, objects uh, that are shared already. Uh, the last uh, object of the buffer is something that is sent on the server, on the, on the network, uh, but uh, not in a really uh, uh, fixed stage. Uh, and uh, here is uh, where most of the uh, data loose uh, and uh, uh, problems appear. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, so, um, so yeah. Basically, you you can uh, share and uh, a lot of uh, application and usage of uh, this technology can be imagined. Um, for example, I can uh, I can imagine uh, going to a lecture and uh, maybe having a, a teacher talking. Uh, 
to us about, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, Kruskal or, or Prims. Yeah, there's some, some algorithm. Teacher, uh, I don't want to take this one. Uh, I want to take this one because... Okay. <laughs> I want to take this one because uh, it's one also. So why not taking this one? Um, and uh, then the teacher can react and uh, say, okay, no problem, we will use this one. And so on and so on. Uh, you can. We are considering uh, adding um, uh, some uh, audio uh, connection so that uh, people sharing the same document can uh, can talk and uh, and then uh, using this application they will uh, have all the all what is needed to uh, really uh, share the drawing and the ideas that are, they want to share with the drawing. Uh, Using WebRTC when it will be uh, up and ready. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it is in the latest version of the browsers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, this uh, yeah co collaboration demo is a cool thing. We can also do it over here uh, with another tab. Just to show that if you're collaborating on a file. Uh, uh, you see the nicknames uh, of other people on top left. Uh, nicknames are uh, 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 timestamps for now, and uh, you see uh, cursors of uh, other people. Uh, so, uh, uh, to do uh, implement uh, something, uh, and uh, I could decide here to uh, replace some words and etc. So, uh, real-time collaboration. This is pretty cool. <coughs> Um, and uh, yeah, and, uh, in the system we also have a tool which we call the profiler uh, to see like information about the system. Uh, this is a very old server version. You should you should update uh, and uh, architecture. And uh, we see that uh, the e even on heavy load uh, the processor never gets very high because uh, uh, solving conflicts is not a very heavy operation. The uh, the thing that gets biggest is the memory. Uh, so here we have a low memory usage, but if lots of people are using lots of files, we have to all have them in memory. And uh, uh, last year we uh, hit a limit when our server would reboot all the time because it was using uh, the maximum number of files uh, in Linux authorized. We didn't know there was such a thing, so we had to set the maximum higher. Uh, but so yeah, we we we're not very heavy on the processor. Um, okay. Uh, I think it's yeah. I guess that uh, concludes our uh, session. So uh, if you have any questions afterwards, maybe you can we can uh, have a chat. And uh, thank you very much. Can you replace VNC with those? VNC, uh, so accessing uh, distant computers. Yeah, remote. Uh, it has been I mean, done. It's not collaborative, but you know, you do have that differential operation, right? In the sense that if you're working a window or if you're moving a window, you could sort of describe the operation with Trust very, me, yeah, uh, it, 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 it has actually been done. Uh, yeah. I think last year or the year before, uh, someone rewrote uh, a VNC client in JavaScript. Uh, yeah. But uh, those things are really, really slow. Uh, VNC is slow, but you could use, uh, uh, in effect, uh, operations like, like you're, yeah. like you're saying. Uh, and uh, with this whole uh, moving windows around, it's uh, a prob uh, problem you can have when you work with operating systems. Uh, uh, and with actually what I would call traditional operating systems, like this one where you have windows and you can move them around. Uh, but the, the goal for the file tree is to uh, become an operating system uh, in the sense that it has uh, a lot of different files and uh, would be able to have programs uh, soon and be able to execute them and without having uh, a visual interface if you will. If you will. Uh, the, the windows you, you write are actually HTML pages which kind of visualize content of files and can work with, with things. Okay, so multimedia, this was the next step. Yeah. Uh, the next step, uh, we thought about some uh, 
so this was a drawing for um, uh, having an easy uh, demoable uh, project, but uh, uh, we also think about uh, in, in, uh, including the notion, notion of time. So maybe having a timeline uh, 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 below the drawing and being able to create keyframes and moving objects around so you could have animations basically. You could redo uh, the flash uh, animator uh, uh, with this tool and collaborate on uh, animations. Uh, you could also go 3D uh, having an editor which places objects in 3D and uh, move them around using WebGL and then you could have like maybe uh, animation tools uh, with, uh, uh, that, that are collaborative. Uh, the, the real part uh, we like to make uh, everywhere uh, is uh, to make things collaborative. Okay. On the file tree itself, uh, maybe Gaetan uh, work is really important to have the server hosting uh, the file tree to run uh, the code and uh, for now it's using a lot of uh, third party uh, uh, servers to do the job uh, yeah. and uh, every new uh, like the user uh, implement new uh, new tools that make the stuff cooler uh, <laughs> after time uh, yeah. every new stuff is welcome so uh, if you're interested in writing stuff uh, <laughs> and you, yeah. you can have the use Actually, for for this project, we use we talked about uh, Paper.js, and I think it's a very nice library. Uh, yeah, um, there are several uh, JS library, and it's for uh, JavaScript in browser animations, and they have uh, uh, ver lots of uh, very cool uh, demos and examples. Uh, for example, one we like is the division raster, where an image uh, gets divided as you move the mouse, and you see the Mona Lisa appearing. But uh, yeah, this library has uh, a lot of very cool uh, tools which we, which we use here for our system. Okay, so the way it is right now is still pretty much document centric, right? I mean, we have, you have, you basically define conflicts as different operations on the same object, a letter, a word, mm -hmm. things like that. Right? But in reality, you may have different operations. I mean, I mean operations that may be different, but um, but they have the same effect. See what I'm saying? Uh, so if two people so if delete you want an object at the same time, I mean they they added it to the same output, but using different approaches, mm -hmm. right? So it's not necessarily a conflict. Yeah, and this gets uh, merged. Yeah, but. But you may end up doing the same thing twice, right? So it's, you, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, another layer of sophistication, if you will, to look at the, the, the semantics of okay. the. Okay, but uh, I don't really know if we can have uh, uh, the same, the exact same uh, result by two different people uh, on multimeter. Because if two people are drawing the same line, you you will see some differences, and maybe no, one of them will decide. For example, to in, in image, right? Yeah. You have say grey gray level images, you have 0 to 255, so there are different ways of quantization. The quanti quantizing it, that may result, that may lead to the same output. That's the, 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 the range you have. Or, you know, like in, in the case of latex, for example. Mm -hmm. For equations, there are different ways of making the equation look the same. <laughs> So you could play with uh, spaces, putting them in. No, no, you could, you know, like you could play with arrays, like like uh, different spaces. You could, you could, you could, you know, make it an equation array. Okay. And, uh, and your question is? <laughs> the question is, you know, if I mean the differences in operation not necessarily uh, conflicts. So you, you you may need an analyzer. For, for, I mean, for each new application, you, you need. Some intelligence in, in determining what is the conflict on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, for now, uh, conflict are really things that can threaten the consistency between uh, mm -hmm. documents. Yeah. The, um, uh, if you read the, the Wikipedia page about operational transformation, uh, uh, they use, uh, and there are several uh, versions, so they use concepts. Uh, like uh, intention preservation, right. and um, and 
this is uh, why you're conserving the intention of the users that you uh, have conflicts. Uh, the example where I want to draw something, so I start my drawing and then I, I, I haven't finished it and uh, someone, two users uh, willing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so the uh, operation transformation algorithms go really from uh, uh, very stupid to very intelligent and you can always try to push the boundaries. Okay, yeah. that's true. Alright, cool. Uh -huh. Thank you. Do we ever see uh, the file tree have uh, advertisements or uh, requiring the users to pay? Uh, uh, no, <laughs> there, is, uh, there is no paying, uh, no advertisement. Uh, we were thinking of uh, maybe if we uh, want really heavy computation or something, uh, if there's a need for it, we could have uh, maybe multiple servers and then uh, maybe have like one uh, free version and one paid version. But like uh, the point is to be uh, open source and, uh, and free. And uh, also there's another very important concept we have is that we uh, kind of don't care about users. So people don't uh, log in. They don't have to sign in. They don't have to log in. Uh, we treat users as just uh, uh, timestamps, so uh, everybody is uh, anonymous and is trying to do things and uh, we don't care, we make the system to uh, uh, withhold uh, through uh, when the users use it. So what can you do with it today that you can't with other tools? Like you can do live preview of web pages. Yeah, uh, well... You can have S3N. <laughs> so what yeah, uh, well, um, uh, I can show what, uh, uh, what people are using it for. Uh, I uh, use it mostly for uh, doing assignments. I like to write the markdown, and uh, with the markdown live preview, at the end I can have uh, a nice result, which I can print to PDF, uh -huh. and then uh, submit the PDF. Uh, but uh, other people are using it for... But that's the preview part of it. Not that, that's, that's, that's not the the collaborative yeah, yeah, part. That's yeah. not collaborative. But for yeah. example, so to prepare this uh, specific presentation, mm -hmm. uh, we share a file to, uh, we to write uh, yeah, ideas. We can collaborate on, on slides when they're done with HTML. But, but that only matters if it's you guys, I mean, in, in terms of the functionality, it only matters if you guys are working on it at the same time. Right? If you don't, then you can. Yeah. SVN is just as, as, as good. Uh, yeah. So I have another example. Uh, uh, this guy uh, is a friend of ours and he likes to do uh, radio uh, and he works on his radio scripts uh, on, on the Valtteri uh, and he's uh, editing them and to show them to his uh, collaborators uh, and like they can have a look at the scripts and maybe try, uh, do some modifications and then when he's live he, he just reads the file. For example, and this is the collab collaborative part. Uh, the, the usage is different from uh, uh, revision system, con uh, con uh, revision control system, um, like Git or SVN, in the way that uh, the users that are working on the the file see exactly what the others are doing. I mean, you don't have to do the sync and check in manually. So that's the that's the difference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also it's uh, it's it's in real time. Uh, when uh, we can't be bothered to like initiate a git repository and like uh, do comments and pushes and whatever, we, we just want to create a file and just go ahead and edit. But this is easy. But can you write, can you not write a JavaScript based interface or wrapper around git and that does uh, exactly does? This is kind I of... I mean, at least for documents. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of an intelligent JavaScript wrapper around git. Uh, we haven't implemented the git part yet, but we do a lot of other stuff. Uh, and ideally, we would be able to talk with uh, Git. Okay. All right. Thank you, David. All right. So, uh, that's it. And uh, we're going to take a 10 minute break and we'll have a good meeting. So, okay. Yeah, you guys are Thank you very much.